Alright folks, welcome to another beer review. I've got a feeling the pitch quality is going to be absolutely rubbish in this one. But it is what it is. And apologies for this, it's been absolutely boiling this weekend. And uh, I've actually been quite well behaved, not drank too much. So I thought, end me Sunday on a high. And uh, yeah, welcome. So today we're going over to Cloudwater and this is a collaboration with Other Half and this is Dipper, sorry Rob, version 14. So of course the, uh, the version series from Cloudwater have pretty much got us to where we are now with uh, British breweries and IPAs and pretty much every brewery across the world even though the hazy Vermont style IPAs were being brewed at the time you know Cloudwater came along and did a series which changed the landscape pioneered um, what would become probably I'd imagine the biggest I'd imagine IPAs are probably the biggest selling beer styles overall when it comes to craft beer but the drinkability fruitiness everyone's getting ipas and everyone's buying hazy ipas so for good or bad for better or for worse i think cloudwater played a big part in that and um sorry i've just got a football bet on and uh i don't know who scored because i couldn't see anyway so yeah, I only had ever had one of the original version series. Can't remember what number it was. Um, I was living in Germany at the time, and it was from a good friend Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews, who I've not seen for absolutely ages. And uh, he, we did sort of like a beer trade kind of thing, and he sent over that, and it was absolutely fantastic because at that time German breweries weren't really churning out those sorts of. You know IPAs there was a big sort of emphasis I would say on like the west coast or just IPAs in general um, so yeah when I was having that I was like what what is this and of course like stuff like stick baguettes amazing haze probably up there as well in terms of like the pioneering side of things but uh, yeah so cloud water uh, trying this again i can't remember what the hops are in this one there's no spiel on the can but yeah brooding collaboration with another pioneering brewery of the style and definitely up there uh producing some of the best other half out of new york so uh classic eight percent double ipa version 14 interesting artwork there and uh, yeah, picked this up from BMOF in Manchester. Uh, paid £8 for this, which I think is pretty much standard fare, isn't it? For like hype, um, big releases. I thought I'd missed out on this uh, because I didn't get around to ordering it straight away. So loads of places sold out. Cloudwater pretty much sold out straight away. And I thought, Do you know what? I'm not going to worry because Cloudwater just by being cloud water will produce a double IPA that will be amazing anyway. So I wasn't going to lose sleep over missing out on a beer release. But when I saw it, I thought, Do you know what, let's get it. Any excuse to get a bit of other half inside me. Probably could have phrased that a little bit better, but it is what it is. So I think did other half brew a version of this as well for obviously stateside but yeah looking forward to it nice double ipa to uh end the evening and like i said there's really no information about the the hops that they've used but it doesn't really matter we'll use our i keep saying we i'm doing a simon martin and referring to myself as we Whoa, man. Already. Just look at that. Look how thick that looks. 
actually looks a lot more sort of like um, chalkier, cloudier, paler on camera. The lights caught it really, really nicely actually on camera. But to me, that's like a dark orangey, yellow, hazy, like apricot puree sort of beer. Looking chunky as all out. I don't mean chunky like there's little chunks. It just looks like one of, you know, that thing where you dip your finger in and it'll leave an indentation. That's the sort of impression you get. And nothing's coming through that at all. One thing is worth a white head. Let's see what we get on the nose. Oh, man. The first smell I'm getting is cheap children's peach yogurt. There's almost... Oh, my God. that's It's got, like, a proper, like skunky resin spliff sort of aroma to it mate that is like uber dank to the point where it smells like weed it actually smells like weed that's ridiculous it smells like a weed strain a little bit of citrus a little bit of melon I just can't get past the, the marijuana. That's ridiculous. That's like proper potent marijuana. <laughs> but like a slight sweet citrusy character to it. Oh my God. I, I've, I've got to stop smelling it because all I'm smelling is like someone sat next to me having a spliff. And me being me. I'll never ask for a toke. I'll just wait till I'm offered. Oh, man. That smells fantastic. I'd love the smell of weed. Like, obviously, where I live, there's a lot of people who smoke pot. Um, so, on my way to work, there will be certain households in certain streets, in certain parts of Skelmersdale, where you will get a massive, like, waft of spliff coming out the window or a porch doorway. And I like it. I just love the smell of it. I don't know if anybody else uh, will agree with me that this smells like a spliff. But yeah, there's like grapefruit, tangerine... It is very resiny, savoury, dank. A little bit of like peach, apricot. Very gentle though. Smells absolutely fantastic. Without any further ado, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Legalised drugs, by the way. At this point, this beer's been out for a little bit, to put it mildly. Oh, the potency and like robustness. Can you say ro robustness or can you just say it's robust? Or can you comment on the robustness of something? I don't know. Why that mouthfeel? It's like a smoothie. Or like a pulpy, freshly squeezed juice. Still a little bit. Oh, there's another update. Oh, it's alright, PSG1. That's on Miyaki. I'm okay. So far. I've probably missed out on a really good cash out point um, whilst recording this. So if I end up losing out, it's your fault, YouTube. But do you know what? 
I'm not going to complain because this is this is ridiculously good. It's got a real like potent zestiness to it, and not just one sort of zest. You get like a little bit of a sharp lime character, but then you've got that like freshly, you know, the little plastic bottles of squeezy lemon. Got the bitterness and piffiness of a grapefruit. A little bit of um, tangerine in there. Not really as sweet as a blood orange. I think there is, because it's a little bit drying. I think there may be something like Nelson in this, but it works beautifully well if there is. And if there isn't, then I, well, you know by now, I know nothing about beer. This is an absolute joy. So absolute, I've used absolute too quickly. Um, or twice in quick succession, I should say. And I don't know what I was going to say. Oh yeah, two absolute like behemoths in the brewing industry. And you, you're getting other half, you're getting cloud water. That's what you're getting. Obviously, I only experienced one of the original version series. So my point of reference, plus with the amount of time that's elapsed, working against me. So I can't say, from my recollection, if this tastes like it's a continuation um, from that version series. I wouldn't even be able to tell you if there was a massive difference between version 1 to version 2. Or like, what would the difference be between version 2 and version 6? I think it's more of like an exploration of this new style. And that's, uh, I'm probably overthinking this, but it doesn't just taste like another double IPA that Cloudwater have brewed, um, which 9 times out of 10 is going to be a banger anyway. Um, there's, there is something a little bit different to it. You can tell that there's like thought and consideration going into it. Not that, you know, any other beers that Cloudwater do, um, are like, oh, we've got these hops, just make this, just do it, just brew it. Um, that was me being an angry sort of like owner of a brewery in the, in the brewery itself, shouting at me head brewer. A comedy works on multiple levels. So yeah, it it, it does taste like the they've really tried to, you know, do something with this. I'm not sure if there's like a, a story specifically for uh, version fourteen. I just realised my hair's making my head look very square at the moment. It's grown in a weird way, um, so I might have to get it cut a lot earlier than I would. Because I don't know if it's going to grow out properly. And I'll look like an absolute idiot. Not that I don't look like an idiot already, of course. But yeah, I like that dank savoury character to it. That weed smell has actually quite subsided. But it's not a skunky smell. It that sort of skunky. Like, it did legitimately smell like you have just walked into a room where someone's been smoking a spliff or is rolling up. Which people might go, Ugh. but to me, that's that's one of nature's finest aromas. There's a bit of weed. But yeah, this got like a sweatiness to it, which I like. There's a little bit of potency on the back end. Obviously, 8%. You're not going to get the ABV. Well, it's got, got quite a lot of oomph to it, which I very much appreciate. And yeah, this is an absolute banger. Um, I'm so glad that I actually managed to get a can of this. Um, I'm sure it has mellowed out a little bit since, it, since its initial release. I'm sure I might not get any flavours that I might have if I'd have got it straight from the brewery. Oh, full-time. 
I think that's... I, I can't see them. I've commented on notifications. I'm getting up. Um, but yeah, I'm very glad that I've actually managed to get a hold of this. And uh, yeah, eight pounds. I think that's sort of like pff, what you're going to have to pay for a good quality double IPA a lot nowadays. Um, I'm not sure how much Cloud Water was selling this directly. I'm not sure how much it would have cost in you know other various web shops or bottle shops. But I think eight quid um, is not too bad, really. Um, with you've got to take into consideration the price of everything else is going up, so. You know what I mean? I'm not one of these people who will moan too much about uh, the food prices going up. Um, it's just something that, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. Um, you know, we're not the French who actually get on the streets and stand up for themselves and make differences happen. You know, force the hand of the, the people that they uh, vote into power. We're just too, like, oh, we'll moan about it on social media. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's all down to greed, isn't it, really, at the end of the day? Let's not get into a political discussion. Um, but yeah, supermarkets don't have to charge the prices that they do. Um, and it's not because suppliers are forcing them to, you know, buy higher or buy more expensive and then their price going up. It's just their demands are too sh too ridiculous for suppliers, the farmers... Um, you can you know, get fresh eggs from your local farm shop. Nine times out of ten, they're going to be a lot cheaper than the, the crap that you're getting in the supermarkets anyway. Milk, direct, you, on some occasions, I'd imagine you would pay a little bit more. Uh, but you know exactly where it's come from. You know the freshness of it. Um, fruit and veg stores, you know, oh, we ran out. There's no, we can't grow tomatoes. We can't get tomatoes in. The supermarkets couldn't get them in. But... You know, green grocers and farm shops around the country had them in, you know, big supplies. Uh, but people fall for it, don't they? Because they're too lazy and bone idle. Um, and it's really annoying. And of course, with, you know, fuel going up, you know, you can't really moan about the price of beer going up when everyone, everything else, you can't single it out as if, why? This should be cheaper. No, because there's a hell of a lot more, you know, tax that goes into it. And, you know, it's... I would not like to see uh, the monthly electricity bill um, or a gas bill or the water rates for a brewery that's having to brew, you know, seven days a week, pretty much. Um, you've just got to take it all into context. And I think for a high quality double IPA that's got a little bit of like a ooh, theatre to it, a special release, I think £8 is pretty much okay. Um, so I'm not going to grumble too much about the price, but yeah, the beer is amazing. It really, really is. This is probably going to go up probably a week or so after I've recorded this, just because I've got other videos lined up. But if you do see a can of this, pick it up, give it a try. It's absolutely banging. Other half, well, cloud water, other half, doing what they do best. And I'm very, very interested to see what version 15 has got to be like um but yeah lovely stuff indeed highly highly recommended go check out both breweries down below two of my favorite breweries ever coming together brewing an absolute barnstormer of a double ipa and um yeah let's could it could this be the start of a new wave Can you remember how exciting it was when you first started drinking hazy IPAs and pale ales? Because you were used to like those clear amber coloured, you know, IPAs and stuff. How mental is that? It's, it's so, so strange. Anyway, cheers for watching. You'll take care. Stay safe. If you tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. And yeah, 20 minutes. Who cares? Bye bye. You all take care.